Good morning. You guys ready to dapify everything yet? Yeah. Um, exactly. All right. Well, uh, I'll try to be quick because I know, like, if we go at this rate, we'll be here till like tomorrow. Um, but, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm sure all of us would like to do that. We're that interested in it. But uh, anyway. Uh, just a quick uh, survey real quick. How many people in the audience are here because they're like developers and they're looking at like building on top of Blockstack or? Okay, and how many people are just like generally interested in blockchain and want to know more? Okay, cool, pretty, pretty good split. Um, I didn't really know what it would be like <laughs> when I was crafting my slides, so we'll just uh, we'll go, we'll go through it. So um, uh, my name is Brian Hoffman. I'm from, uh, I, I, I'm the project lead for Open Bazaar. Uh, and I'm also the CEO of OB1, a company that primarily funds uh, developers that are working on OpenBazaar, as well as building products and services on top of that protocol. How many of you have heard of OpenBazaar? Okay, cool, awesome, all right. I was, I was thinking maybe two or three would be good, but everybody's heard of it, okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I just really quickly wanted to talk a little bit about like how OpenBazaar uses Blockstack and like why uh, why we think it's important in in the the whole crypto ecosystem right now. Um, so OpenBazaar, I mean you guys have all heard of it, so anyway it's probably redundant. But it, you know OpenBazaar is the first truly decentralized peer-to-peer uh, -peer marketplace on the internet. And and what I mean by that is is that it literally there's there's no central servers, right? Like so. Ob1, Open Bazaar. We don't run it. We don't have any data center like like on here that stores all the data that manages and routes all your requests. Um, there, there's also no middleman, which means that there's no person sitting in the middle to take all your fees from you. Um, the Costa guys mentioned like 12% from home sharing fees. You know, on our platform, if you were renting out a room or something like that, you wouldn't have to pay those fees either. Um, so we're all kind of sort of solving this similar problems. Uh, uses Bitcoin, can also use other cryptocurrencies. Right now we're focused on Bitcoin, but later we hope to support others. Um, and, and in the storage uh, platform that we use right now is, uh, is uh, IPFS, and it's, you know, a lot of these technologies are very similar, but the idea is that you want to distribute the, the data across all of the computers on the network rather than putting them on Facebook servers or somebody else. Um, so just a quick recap of the history of Blockstack and OpenBazaar. We've been working together for almost three years now. Um, some of you may not even realize it was one name before and, and, and everything else. Um, uh, in 2015, we started working with them to integrate uh, Blockstack into, into the product. Uh, 2016, last year in April, we launched the first version and it supported uh, the blockchain IDs. Um, they changed the name a couple times, and as you can see, I still don't remember what the real name is. It's a blockchain ID. Um, and uh, it allows you to map your OpenBazaar accounts to uh, your, your blockchain ID. And then now we're currently getting ready to launch 2.0, which is also going to support uh, Blockstack. And uh, we hope in the future we'll be able to extend that to even uh, more capabilities. Um, so, so why do we why do we use Blockstack? Well, first of all, it, it helps us create easy access to decentralized properties, right? So, in OpenBazaar, users are creating uh, buyer accounts, or they're creating uh, merchant accounts, or they're becoming moderators, and they don't have this sense of identity because, just like in Bitcoin, your identity is basically your key, and a key in most cases is displayed to users as uh, like a hash which is just a string and it's like frustrating and annoying and nobody can remember that. So Blockstack with their blockchain IDs allows us to give people user friendly names to assign to those accounts. Um, and uh, you know, and it also allows us to help route to different IPFS content uh, using those domain names. Um, so under 2.0, we're changing the way it works a little bit. So currently, you know, we recommend users go to one name and sign up for an account and map it there. But in this case, we're going to have um, a registration process built into the OpenBazaar application so you don't have to go out. Or you could also do it within the Blockstack browser and sign up for a subdomain, which would be part of this OpenBazaar domain. And, uh, We'll be managing that from the OpenBazaar side. But another caveat to that is we're going to allow people to use existing Blockstack uh, domains. So if you sign up somewhere else for like a CASA ID, you could use that to authenticate to the network and, and give people that username as well. 
Um, one of the most important parts of this is that it creates some validation around um, identity and, and reputation. So uh, they, they mentioned how you don't have this transportable ID, you know, your reputation doesn't go with you from marketplace to marketplace. In this case, we're hoping to get to a point where we can actually transport that. So if you have a reputation on Casa for home sharing, maybe that transports into Open Bazaar and to other platforms. And by having these user recognizable handles, you're able to also kind of visually understand that you're at the right store, so people can't like um, spoof you and and uh, cause other vulnerabilities. Um, so, so why are naming systems important for these kinds of marketplaces? Uh, like I said, rep reputation and trust. Um, DApps typically don't have like universal usernames. They, they we we try to issue like hashes or whatever. Or we come up with some internal naming system, but it's better to actually be able to reuse these across other platforms. There's all kinds of uh, systems out there right now that are, that are coming out, Ethereum naming system, Uport, you know, Blockstack. So it, it, it's, it will be interesting to see where this goes in the future. Um, obviously, we're fully behind Blockstack and, um, and supporting that, and we'd love to see the whole industry uh, advance. And, uh, and also, being able to tie real-world accounts to a decentralized identity is, is something that I think is going to be very important in the near term, too, right? Like, people are not going to, like, drop all their centralized accounts for the foreseeable future, right? You're going to have your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your eBay, your Amazon, and you have great reputation at those places. So being able to, like, peg those to your, you know, decentralized identity for people to, to vet, vet you as a, as a human is still super important, and, and we're able to do that with, uh, with the blockchain ID. So uh, that was a quick presentation. Uh, if, if you really want to understand it better, the best way to do it is to go and, and download the uh, application. Right now, our, our first version is out. You can use it, but we're really, really close. In probably mid-August, we're going to be launching 2.0, which is completely different. Um, it runs on IPFS, and uh, it's way better. And it supports Tor for anonymity. Um, and it's going to be really, really, uh, really interesting. So you should check it out. Um, if, you, if you're a developer, it seems like a lot of you are, go to github.com slash openbazaar and help us out there. Join our Slack. Um, and join our subreddit. So uh, if you have any questions, come and find me. I'll be glad to talk to you or answer anything. And uh, thanks.